Hi, I'm Seb. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Card Castle. Welcome to a demo of the Cardbot, our automated scanning and sorting robot for Magic the Gathering cards. This demo just covers the basics, so book in a live one and we can discuss your specific needs. This is the Cardbot here. It's about the size of a gaming computer rig and will fit nicely on the counter in your store. First, I'll take off the door. It attaches magnetically to the front and can be snapped to the back when you aren't using it. The door can help to improve image recognition depending on the lighting in your store and otherwise helps keep your cards safe while scanning and helps keep dust out of the machine. Cards are loaded into the center stack. They can be loaded in any orientation and any combination. So this one has its name over towards this side, but the next one has its name over this way. You can load in up to a thousand cards at a time or up to the top of this column. With the cards loaded in, it's time to pair your phone with the machine. You can do this on the admin interface, a page that only the owner of the card bot has access to. With our mobile app, scan this QR code and your phone will be paired to the machine and you're ready to start scanning. The reason we're using the phone as the control interface is so that you can offer card scanning services to your players. Maybe you'll charge five or $10 to scan a thousand cards or just use it to attract players into your store. One thing I like to point out on this admin interface page is this diagnostics tab. It's full of technical jargon, but this is the kind of information that's being shared with us. And so if anything goes wrong, we're able to fix up your machine remotely. I'm starting a scan now with the machine set up to just scan cards and add them into inventory. It won't be sorting this time. To explain the process, the card is lit up for the photo to be taken, and then there's a quick flash of purple as that image is processed. You'll then see green lights, which mean the card has been correctly recognized and added to inventory, or blue lights, which means that the card couldn't be recognized and might need to be processed again. Cards can fail to be recognized because they might be damaged or have a big signature on them. Basically anything that makes them look very different to what we're expecting. After scanning, the card is picked up with these soft silicon suction cups, slightly bent to flick off any extra cards that have stuck to the pickup card, and then moved to either the left or the right. Uh, cards that are correctly recognized and added are moved over to the right. Cards that couldn't be recognized are moved over to the left. Sorting works in a very similar way. You set criteria and cards that match the criteria are placed over in the right-hand pile. Cards that don't match are placed over in the left, along with any errors. It's possible for us to add sorting criteria for any card attribute. At the moment, we have price, color, type, and rarity, and we're working on buy list sorting at the moment. Our highest priority while designing the card bot was card safety. The soft silicon suction cups are archival quality and won't mark cards even after hundreds of scans. We also have automatic jam detection and recovery. If a card ends up in the wrong spot, say resting on the column here, these platforms drop down and slot the card back into place, which first of all means that the cards won't be damaged if they end up in the wrong spot. And second means that the device keeps running in the background. If you go out to lunch and start it scanning, you're not gonna come back and it's only gotten through one card. The second priority was accuracy. We have implemented printing detection so that cards are always recognized as the correct version. And we have systems that prevent false positives. Speed was our final top priority. The Cardbot is capable of scanning a thousand cards an hour, depending on settings. This unit is scanning at about 750 cards an hour, but we've got some room to improve with the firmware and timing of the pickup head movements. That's basically it for the mechanical operations. The Cardbot uploads cards to this staging area, so you can check that everything is correct before committing them to your actual inventory. Refreshing this page loads the most recently scanned cards and they're displayed in the order they appear in this output column. So at the top here, we have the foil chalice of the void. On the staging area, you can check whether a card was recognized as the correct version, change whether it's a foil or not, its condition and its language. Currently, the card bot doesn't detect whether a card is a foil or not. It will still recognize which card it is, just not whether it's a foil. The same goes for language. Cards printed in other languages are currently recognized as English versions. Because of this, we recommend that you scan foil cards or cards printed in other languages in separate sessions. You're able to set defaults for these. So each card is added with the appropriate attribute and you're not having to tick every single one of these boxes. 
That said, we do have plans to add in automatic detection of FOIL and language. So scanning in separate sessions won't be necessary forever. We don't think it will be possible to do that with condition though. The differences are just so slight and subjective, so it's extremely difficult for image recognition software to pick up. The last thing to edit is tags. You can tag cards with additional information. This feature is very flexible, but the main use case I see for stores is tagging cards with their location. For example, you might have taken this set of a thousand cards out of one of the rows of a 5,000 count box. And as you're scanning it in, you can scan those cards with the fact that they're in box one, maybe they've come out of row two, and we can automatically tag cards with their position in that stack. So you know that this foil chalice of the void is in position 970, which means it's towards the end of the row. You can export the list of cards from that session as a CSV file in a variety of formats designed to import seamlessly to other platforms. At the moment, we have the Binder POS and Crystal Commerce formats, and we're working on adding TCG Player at the moment. We can also add any custom formats that you might need. My vision for this platform is that it becomes the central inventory system that powers sales on all other platforms. So if you're selling in-store, on TCG Player, and on eBay too, you have a synchronized inventory between them. Once you're happy that all of the cards in the staging area are correct, you've tagged them with the relevant information and exported them for use elsewhere, you can add them into your master inventory. Jumping over to the collection tab, you can browse your cards with lots of different viewing options. You can search your collection for a specific card, sort by price or by converted mana cost, and group cards to display them individually or grouped together by printing or name. There's also filter buttons for color, type, rarity, and for your tags. For example, if you wanted to know what's my most expensive card in box three, you would click that tag and then sort by price to see that this exalted dragon is the most valuable card in box three. Clicking on a card will open this panel that shows information for that specific card such as its price or where it's located with these tags. You can edit that. For example, if this exalted dragon shouldn't be in box one, you can delete that tag and say it's moving over into the cabinet. The final thing I like to show people is public collections. You can set your collection to be public, which creates a shareable link so that your customers can check what you have in stock. They'll see the same interface for browsing your cards, but your logo is at the top so they know whose collection they're viewing. That's it for the basic demo. We know that each store has a different approach to managing their trading cards. So it's worth booking a live demo so we can look at how the card bot will work with your systems. There's a link to book one in the description below. Thanks for watching.